Hello DC fans and welcome back to Nerd Doc. In this video we're going to explain the ending of Black Adam as well as cover some of the important plot details. There are Black Adam spoilers in this video. Since Black Adam is still in theaters we can't show you any footage other than what's in trailers so please bear with us there. There are also chapter timestamps so you can jump around the video as you'd like. And just as a quick note we are doing a giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You can find the details for that at the end of the video or in the description below. You'll also find our other Black Adam videos below including an explanation of the mid credit scene and what we know about a potential Black Adam sequel and how it will shape the future of the DCEU as well as the fate of Dr. Fate. Throughout the movie Black Adam is referred to as Teth Adam. This is actually Black Adam's real name, Theo Ramsey's Djoser Teth Adam. Teth Adam is told multiple times that his name is old fashioned so at the very end of the film he finally changes it to Black Adam. The film begins in 2600 BCE in the city of Kondak which is basically Black Adam's version of Metropolis or Gotham City. It's his hometown. The origins of Black Adam are also changed a bit in the movie to make him a little bit more family friendly. In the comics Black Adam gets the powers of Shazam from his nephew who the Great Wizard chooses as his champion. Black Adam then betrays him when his nephew isn't willing to kill the dictators of the past and instead wants to save them and give them peace. In the movie Black Adam's nephew is replaced by his son who still becomes the Great Wizard's champion. However as soon as his son gives Black Adam the powers of Shazam, losing them himself, he's killed by their enemies. Black Adam then attacks the dictator losing control of his power and destroying the palace. The wizards then lock Black Adam away in a prison where he sleeps until modern day. The movie mainly revolves around a woman named Adriana and her son Harut. The city of Kondok is under the oppressive control of the Intergang who killed Adriana's husband. They're after the crown of Sabak which grants great power and could potentially allow someone to rule the world. While Adriana and her team are looking for the crown to keep it out of the hands of the Intergang they are betrayed by their colleague Ishmael. But before Adriana is executed she manages to summon Black Adam who was imprisoned alongside the crown. Black Adam basically owns everyone and Amanda Waller calls in Hawkman to form a team and take Black Adam into custody since he's openly killing people and seems to have no regard for authority. Waller is concerned that he will be a problem and wants him taken care of while he's still getting accustomed to the new time period and not at full power. Hawkman brings in Dr. Fate out of retirement as well as Atom Smasher and Cyclone to flesh out the Justice Society of America. It's indirectly implied that there are more members of the JSA but none are directly mentioned in the movie. The first version of the team in the comics consisted of Hawkman, Dr. Fate, the original Atom, Our Man, Spectre, Sandman, Green Lantern, and The Flash. In the comics the JSA predates the Justice League but in the movie Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Aquaman all exist at the same time as a JSA. We don't see them directly but Harut is a big comic book fan and has a bunch of posters and stuff in his room. Black Adam even destroys a couple of the Superman posters throughout the film foreshadowing what's to come. Hawkman has a large estate in Louisiana with a plane very similar to what the X-Men fly around in. The main difference is that Hawkman's plane is made of nth metal which he claims makes it indestructible. Now Nth Metal has a lot of different uses in the comics but that's typically not one of its attributes. Nonetheless the JSA can't defeat Black Adam so their goal is to convince him to say Shazam and relinquish his powers. Most of the film consists of Black Adam versus the JSA or Black Adam trying to save Adriana or Harut from the Intergang. It's during these times that the JSA works with Black Adam to stop the Intergang. Hawkman and Dr. Fate fight pretty well but Cyclone and Atom Smasher just feel like they're kind of there. They don't really have much to do but one little easter egg is that Atom Smasher's uncle, the original Atom, is played by Henry Winkler in a quick cameo. E Toward the end of the movie when the JSA and Black Adam think they've killed Ishmael, Black Adam agrees to relinquish his power and essentially go back to sleep. The JSA take him to a Task Force X black site arranged by Amanda Waller. When they arrive they're greeted by Agent Harcourt from the Peacemaker series. Harcourt is working for Waller and handling Black Adam for the moment. Waller's people lock Black Adam away in stasis in a water filled tank so he can't say Shazam. 
There are a number of other tanks in the facility, but it's hard to make out who's in any of them. When the movie eventually releases on digital or HBO Max, we'll have to go back through this scene frame by frame to see which villains are locked away here. Once the JSA leaves, they soon realize that in order for Ishmael to use the crown of Sabak and become Sabak himself, who is basically like a minion of Satan, he had to die first. Once Black Adam killed him, he was transported to the Rock of Finality, which is a dark mirror image of the Rock of Eternity, the location where the great wizard Shazam resides. The Rock of Finality is basically like hell, so Ishmael goes to hell and interacts with several minions who look kind of like Satan and possibly Asmodeus. They give him the power of Sabak, and he is revived. It's now up to the JSA to stop him from sitting on the throne back in Kondak, which would basically destroy the city and create a great danger for the rest of the world. Dr. Fate creates a barrier to lock out the rest of the JSA, saving Hawkman from his death that Fate saw in a vision. Dr. Fate sacrifices himself so that Hawkman and the rest of the JSA can survive. While Fate is fighting Sabak, he uses his mind to speak with the subdued Black Adam, convincing him to escape his prison and defeat Sabak. Black Adam breaks out, but essentially dies on his way back to the surface. Walder's prison is deep underwater in an undisclosed location that appears to be somewhere in the Arctic. Black Adam defeats the guards, taking a number of gunshots in the process, then tries to swim to the surface, but seemingly dies along the way. While he's dying, he sees his deceased wife and son, who inform him it's not his time to die, and convince him to say Shazam. What basically happens here is that Black Adam was on the verge of death, but not quite dead. He sees the vision of his deceased family, and that gives him the willpower to survive long enough to say Shazam and regain his powers, healing all of his wounds. Black Adam immediately engages Sabak in a final battle, just after Fate dies. He ends up getting help from the remaining members of the JSA, with Hawkman even using Dr. Fate's helmet to create illusionary clones of himself. Once Sabak is defeated and Hawkman is done assisting, Dr. Fate's helmet disappears. This could potentially lead into a Justice League Dark movie at some point, or he could just be replaced by the next Dr. Fate and a Black Adam sequel. We explore this more in our Dr. Fate video linked in the description below. As the film comes to an end, Black Adam smashes the throne because he does not want to rule and instead agrees to stay in Kondok as its protector. Just before he smashes the throne, we get a nod to this comic book panel with The Rock making a similar pose and expression. So what did you think of Black Adam? Was it everything you'd hoped it would be? Maybe even the best DCEU film? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to check out our videos on the credit scene and the fate of Dr. Fate linked in the description below. Now let's get into the giveaway details. To enter, first subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on at least one of our social media channels linked in the description below. At any point in time between October 20th and November 13th, which is the Sunday after Black Panther Wakanda Forever releases, comments made on posts published during that time period on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter will enter you into the giveaway. The more posts you comment on, the higher your chances of winning will be. You can enter one time per post. Unfortunately, this is US only, but on Monday, November 14th, we'll pick a random comment from a random post during that period and contact the winner, as well as announce the winner in whatever video we publish that week. For now, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves Black Adam and the DCEU.